defeat. The Eagles are winners. Fred McLeod is here with the latest from the road to the Final Four. Fred. No apologies necessary. In fact, if there was an award for scariest team headed home, it would definitely be Eastern Michigan. Just ask the nation's third-ranked team. MEMU did what it wanted against UConn for much of the first half. Earl Boykin scored 10, although he had to settle for 5 of 15 shooting. Everybody in Indianapolis was believing in these upstarts in Miscellany, like Theron Wilson, who had three more blocked shots, eight in two games. The UConn would wipe out a 13-point deficit. The alley-oop from Ray Allen to Kirk King awakened the sleeping giant from the east. Still, Brian Colbert refused to let his team die. 36 points, including seven triples, and this dash down the floor. But the Huskies had a little too much talent. The All-American Allen scoring 25. And all the Eagles were left with more memory for the gallant fight at 95-81 defeat. Fred Hewen watched moral victory for the Max and joins us now from Indianapolis. Ready? Well, Fred, the greatness of this tournament, maybe the shame all in the same, is that uh, 64 teams enter. One team goes home happy. 63 go home with forlorn looks on their faces. For Eastern, that day came a little bit earlier than they had hoped, but a lot later than a lot of folks expected. Coming off a 69% second-half shooting performance against Duke, the Eagles came out today and hit 13 of their first 18 shots in building a 13-point lead. And UConn knew it was in for a war. They was a little bit surprised and when they looked in our eyes and they saw there was no fear there. They didn't crumble when we accomplished that lead. They just nicked at it and nicked at it. And eventually, at halftime, we were only up by, what, two points or something like that. For the record, it was one point. But the Huskies hammered EMU on the boards, out-rebounding them nearly 2-1 to one for the game. Eastern walking off the floor a loser for just the sixth time this year, this time never to come back. And the empty Eastern locker room with only a manager left was a bitter reminder that no matter how successful a season is, no loss hurts worse than the final one. Tonight it just seems that for the first time all year, we played a team that just had too many weapons. I mean, it hurts. Last year it hurt, but this year... It cuts a lot deeper. I see some guys who just break down on TV, I'm, how really bad they feel. And how about the seniors, Theron Wilson and Brian Tolbert? Their final games as Eagles were fitting signatures to careers that showed leadership, poise, and in the end, the dignity of a champion. I'll tell you something, I'm a competitor. You know, I want to keep playing, you know, but, you know, the reality part is that, you know, you can't play no more, you know. It's over with me in college. We band together as a family and, and as a unit. And, I mean, I told him right after the game, I said, that's, that's real friendship, that's true friendship that, that bonded in there. And like I said a few minutes ago, I couldn't ask for anything more. No, none of us really could. And Fred Ben Braun told me after the game, this is as proud as he's ever been of a team. And that's not just, uh, you know, lip service. He's had some good ones here. You go back year after year after year, the MAC champion is capable of competing with some of the top teams in the other divisions. Uh, it's just that uh, I, I thought they were very, very poised against Duke. I was not surprised to see them win that game. And uh, I thought they played well against Con Connecticut, got their 13-point lead. But uh, I think in the end, it was the team with the bigger, better athletes, mm -hmm. uh, taking nothing away from Eastern, but the bigger, better athletes probably uh, prevailed. Well, the Eastern Michigan uh, Cinderella story ended against uh, UConn, which is no real shock. But what a nice story it was. Fred Human was on the road with the Eagles and sums up their tournament. Eastern shot 69% in the second half of a 75-60 opening round win over Duke. And the hot shooting carried over into the early portion of the battle with Connecticut. EMU came out and hit 10 of its first 18 shots and surging to a 13-point lead over the stunned Giants from UConn. Connecticut, they showed that they were the more experienced team. Yeah. That's just like running a race. Uh, we started out the blocks just entirely too fast, and they just paced themselves. Yeah, and Eastern didn't. The hot shooting eventually dissipating, and the Huskies quickly became the hot team, erasing that 13-point deficit and taking control of the game during the second half. For the first time all year, we played a team that just had too many weapons. Now, they just had too many weapons for us today. And it's hard to win when you can't get a rebound. In fact, Eastern was out-rebounded nearly 2-1 to one for the game, and even an outstanding 36-point effort by Brian Tolbert wasn't enough to save the Eagles. He went down fighting, but went down all the same. The empty locker room afterward, a fitting sign of the empty feeling inside the players on this team. A team that will soon remember the joy of the overall accomplishment, but for now, was absorbing a most painful loss. If um, when I woke up this morning, you said this was my last game this year, I never believed it. I mean, it hurts. Last year it hurt, but this year it cuts a lot deeper. I see 
Those guys who just break down on TV. I'm how really bad they feel when another team, another team is real happy and joyful, but it really, it really hurts when you have to walk off the floor. I just said, "Wow, this is my last game," you know, and I said, "Well, you know, it's, it's real life, so I've been through a lot of real life situations, so it, you know, at first it was a shock, you know, but now you know I got to live with that, and just move on. It's time to move on with my life." Wilson is one of two seniors on this team who left the floor for the final time. The other was Tolbert, who, in a classy display of sportsmanship, went around the entire court during the final moments to make sure he shook hands with every player and coach from both teams, as if to say, job well done, something all were saying about him. We were just giving it all we had, and that's, I mean, that's all I could add, being a senior from the, from the guys on the team. Your last game, obviously, maybe your best game. Is there any solace in that? Um... No, nah, it wasn't my best game, because if it would have been my best game, maybe we would have won. Well, when you get all those job offers in the offseason, maybe you ought to consider what you have here. you got a pretty good group. Well, I, I'm not worrying about that. I'm, I, I, I've been very uh, happy at Eastern. Eastern's a great place. I sometimes get tired of people saying yeah, that uh, Eastern uh, is not a big-time program. I think we are a big-time pro program because, Fred, we have big-time people. So UConn escapes from the Dome and moves on to the NCAA Sweet 16, while Eastern Michigan deals with the disappointment and dwells on what could have been. But I'll tell you what these Eagle players ought to be dwelling on. They ought to be dwelling on the message they sent, that you don't judge a book by its cover, you don't judge a team by its conference, and you don't judge players by their size from head to toe. In Indianapolis, Fred Human for Sports Final Edition. The best part of the whole story for me, for Eastern, was an interview with Earl Boykin's little brother, and sh even shorter than Earl. And he said, the thing he loves about Earl is he can dish on the big dude. And I, th I thought that was great. Earl just showed everybody, didn't he? He can dish on him. He can score on him, too. I, I thought he was wonderful in, his, in this, his showcase. He did not squander the opportunity to show everybody what he was capable of doing. We're down to the sweet 16 now of those that remain. 